In a quiet room in 19th century Hungary, a young man stared into the eyes of a problem that had haunted the world for 2,000 years. The great minds of history bowed before it. Euclid, Newton, even Gauss. But this man, this forgotten genius, refused to kneel. His name was Janos Bolyai. He bent the laws of space before Einstein, and no one believed him. This is the story of a war against the rules of the universe, and the man who won, alone. December 15th, 1802. In the frozen hills of the Kingdom of Hungary, a child is born under a sky of falling snow. His name, Janos Bolyai. His home, a cradle of numbers and symbols. The world doesn't know it yet, but this child will shake the very shape of space. From his earliest days, Janos was taught by his father, Farkas Bolyai a respected mathematician and close friend of Carl Friedrich Gauss. Their home wasn't just a place to live. It was a classroom, a sanctuary of learning. While other boys learned letters, Janos was already reading Latin proofs. By age five, he was solving mathematics problems most adults couldn't touch. He didn't just memorize answers. He asked why they worked. His brilliance wasn't noisy. It was quiet, precise, like the ticking of a perfect clock. Other students admired his mind but didn't understand it. He was different, speaking in formulas, dreaming in angles. Sometimes he felt like a visitor from another world. And sometimes he wished he was. At just 15, he entered the Royal Engineering Academy in Vienna, a child among men. Here, he would train in science, war, and discipline. But inside, his fire for pure mathematics still burned hotter than anything they could teach. He became a master of fencing and music. He spoke nine languages and played the violin like it was part of his body. But even with all this, nothing captivated him like the world of geometry. He was searching for something deeper. In the pages of Euclid, he found a flaw. The fifth postulate about parallel lines felt out of place, forced. No one had ever proven it. And something about that disturbed him deeply. It didn't fit. And that meant it could be broken. When Janos told his father he would tackle the fifth postulate, Farkas did not celebrate. He looked into his son's eyes and said, it will consume your soul like mine. Promise me you'll stop. But Janos didn't stop. He couldn't. The question was too big. And he was already too deep. As his teenage years unfolded, Janos withdrew further from the outside world and deeper into the realm of abstract space. He spent days and nights alone, studying geometric diagrams with a hunger few could understand. His obsession was no longer about school, it was about truth itself. While other boys trained with swords, he battled ideas that had outlived empires. Even in sleep, the puzzle refused to let go of him. His dreams were haunted by triangles that didn't behave the way geometry said they should. They twisted, curved, and defied every rule he had ever learned. Janos was no longer just a student of mathematics. He was its prisoner. One evening, after weeks of restless calculation, he realized something that shattered the foundation of ancient geometry. If you let go of Euclid's fifth postulate, space itself could bend. Parallel lines didn't have to meet or stay perfectly apart. They could follow a new logic altogether. 
It was not a small discovery. It was the beginning of a new geometry. Now that the rules had cracked open, he knew what he had to do. Build a whole new system from the ground up. He called it absolute geometry, a structure that did not rely on Euclid's assumptions. It was rigorous, logical, and terrifying in its implications. What he was creating felt like rewriting the laws of reality itself. Despite the brilliance of his work, doubt crept in like winter chill through a broken window. What if he was the only one who could see this truth? What if the world mocked him or worse, ignored him? For the first time, he wondered whether this new geometry was a gift or a curse. At last, he turned to the one person whose mind might understand, his father, Farkas Bolyai. Years ago, Farkas had warned him not to pursue the fifth postulate, but now Janosch had defied the warning. He sent his notes away with trembling hands, unsure of the answer he would receive. Waiting was agony, but silence would have been worse. Farkas Bolyai, no stranger to the geometry wars of his youth, was stunned. His son had not only gone further than him, he had gone beyond anyone. This was no youthful scribble, it was a mathematical revolution. He wrote back urging Janosch to publish immediately, calling the work a world born from nothing. The 24-page appendix was complete, a masterpiece in a world not yet ready to read it. His father offered to publish it with his own book, giving Janosch the platform he needed. But something still held Janosch back, a fear deeper than failure. What if he had broken something in mathematics that could never be fixed? In 1832, Farkas Bolyai made the decision that would change mathematical history. He included his son's daring new geometry as an appendix to his own book, Tentamen, hoping the world would finally take notice. The work was printed with reverence, but little fanfare. Janosch's name was now in ink, but the silence that followed would be deafening. Farkas sent the appendix to his old friend and mathematical titan, Carl Friedrich Gauss. He hoped Gauss would recognize Janosch's genius and offer public support. He let her traveled over snowy plains, carrying decades of effort and generations of ambition. It landed not in a stranger's hands, but in the lap of one of history's greatest minds. Gauss did respond, but not with applause. In a short letter, he praised the work privately, only to claim he had developed the same ideas decades earlier. To praise him would be to praise myself, he wrote, a sentence that would haunt the Bolyai name. Instead of recognition, Janosch received what felt like theft, wrapped in a compliment. At first, Janosch was hopeful, convinced that Gauss would validate his discovery. But that hope turned quickly into burning anger. Had his work been stolen? Had all his years of solitude led only to someone else taking the credit? The mathematical world wasn't ready. His ideas were too strange, too distant from the geometry taught for 2,000 years. Scholars turned the page, but not their minds. The silence felt like exile. Whispers began to spread in the corners of Europe's academic halls. Had Gauss seen the path but feared to walk it publicly, only to claim it when another dared? Some believed him. Others saw betrayal masked as brilliance. In 1833, Janosch left the Austrian army disillusioned and emotionally drained. What once gave him pride now felt empty. He had given everything to mathematics, and it had given him nothing in return. His uniform came off, but the wounds stayed on. Janosch returned to Marosvasarheli, not as a celebrated genius, but as a wounded soul. He stopped teaching, rarely left his home, and drifted into isolation. The world had finally heard his voice, but chose to ignore it. And in the silence that followed, he began to disappear.
Janos Boliai spent his later years alone, surrounded only by paper, silence, and memory. Though ignored by the world, he never stopped thinking, never stopped writing mathematics. His notebooks filled with new ideas, fragments of genius that no one would read for decades. His life became a quiet routine, where discovery lived side by side with despair. The violin was once his companion, a way to feel alive when the world grew distant. But even music could not silence the doubts inside him. His hands, once precise and powerful, began to tremble. And one day, the music simply stopped. On January 27, 1860, Janosz Boliai died quietly in the town where he was born. There was no obituary in the major journals, no international mourning, no statues unveiled. Just a brilliant man, gone before the world ever saw what he gave it. Years after his death, a new generation of mathematicians began to uncover what had been left behind. His manuscripts, long neglected, held ideas far ahead of their time. For the first time, scholars realized Bolyai hadn't just questioned Euclid, he had reinvented geometry itself. The world had missed its chance to know him alive, but it would not forget him in death. Bolyai's name began to appear alongside giants. Mathematicians like Riemann and Hilbert built upon his bold framework, pushing the boundaries of thought. What was once radical had become foundational. His science of the imaginary was now the cornerstone of modern mathematics. Then came Einstein. Using Bolyai's geometry, he reimagined space, time and gravity itself. The strange world Janosch, once mapped alone in the dark, now formed the backbone of the theory of relativity. The universe had finally caught up to a man who had lived decades ahead of it. Today, schools, universities and scientific institutions around the world bear his name. What began as quiet rebellion against an ancient idea became a revolution that touched the stars. Janosch Bolyai didn't just change mathematics, he expanded reality itself. And now, the world he imagined lives on in every mind that dares to ask, what if Euclid was wrong? If history has taught us anything, it's that the most powerful stories are often the ones we've never heard. At Migoro History, we uncover the hidden battles the untold intrigues and the turning points that shaped our world. Every video is crafted to feel like you're right there in the moment it happened.